Hello, I'm Stephen Foster and I'm here on the occasion of uh, the exhibition Seafaring at the John Hansard Gallery with Zineb Sudhir. Uh, Zineb, your work is very often associated with dereliction and decay, uh, and yet most of the work, both film and photography images, are intensely sumptuous and bright and uh, gorgeous in the way in which they're presented. This is, seems to be an anomaly. How does that work? Yeah, I mean, it's true that I tend to work often with po opposites, you know, beauty and ugliness and visibility and invisibility and women and men. And a lot of my work tends to work with kind of those opposite binaries mm. often. Um, but yes, I mean, for me, very much uh, ruins, it's kind of, you know, for me, connects or is a metaphor for memory and traces. Uh, of memory especially. Then, um, but next to that there is also this element of beauty for me which is important um, because I believe that in terms of some time talking about some particular issues it's good to do it via you know something that might be beautiful or seductive. That's the way I've been working mm -hmm. only since the last four or five years. It wasn't always the case before uh, when I was working more with my family. It would be interesting to hear you talk about that change because there was quite a change in your work at that time. So what were you doing before and what pushed the change? Yeah. I mean, the change really happened, I think, in 2003 when I went back to Algeria after something like 15 years um, of absence. And the reason I wasn't going back, obviously, is because there was a civil war there. Um, I spent the whole, all my childhood up to, to the age of 18, 19, going there on holiday every now and then. And then the civil war happened. In the meantime, during the civil war, my parents were leaving Paris because they were immigrants in France went back to live in Algeria. Then first it was quite difficult, we couldn't go back because of the civil war to see them. Obviously they could come out of the country to visit us in Paris and Paris became the point of, of meeting for all the brothers and sisters and, and my parents. And the work I was doing at the time was very much, you know, using my mom, my dad, mm -hmm. my daughter, because also I became a mother around that time also. And I started doing work uh, around the family. And always the work very much about my Algerian identity, but always using the family as a starting point for all these issues of immigration, language, etc., etc. Um, and then what happened in 2003 when the civil war stopped, kind of, you know, um, and I decided to go back. I just felt like I needed, since I was making so much work about Algeria, I actually needed to go there, revisit, rediscover the space, the place, and also really get all my inspiration from, from the country mm. rather than from stories told by my parents. Mm. So and obviously when I went back, I totally fell in love again mm. with the place. Obviously I went back with 15 years later and I was an adult, I was a mother. I already had immigrated, immigrated mm. to London mm. in 86, you know. Um, so I just kind of discovered a place which I was, was very inspiring to me. In some ways, what became interesting than the new work, I kind of substituted the family with the landscape mm -hmm. of Algeria or the cityscape of Algeria. And that kind of made me create still work to do with still immigration in some ways, but much more, yeah, universal in some ways. We were talking earlier about the relationship between the aesthetic mm -hmm. and political content mm -hmm. and your earlier works were very documentary based and mm -hmm. even though they were very personal of course yeah. um, and these are much more uh, an exploration of in a sense the beauty in dereliction which mm. tells a story in itself and that's that is um that is a, um, dr um, creating a balance between the aesthetic and the political the yeah. political and the poetic is that well, how do, could you actually talk a bit about that balance yeah i mean before the work, as you said, was very personal, you know, it was very much, you know, me in front of the camera. It's, it was very performative also, mm. you know, in many ways. Then by making work which was more poetical, I distanced myself from the personal. Because I do believe that uh, when you deal with work which is, um, you know, deals with social expo, social issues, it's quite good to actually leave it open mm. for people to make their own interpretation mm. or whatever. And I think beauty of images, you know, aesthetism, you know, for me it's a great way to bring somebody to a situation mm. or, or, or to give a fact or, or you know, or some information. Also, at the stage of my practice, important to challenge this notion of documentary into something that was becoming more poetical. You know, I think every artist at one point in the practice, they want to either challenge, find a new mediums mm. to explore a new way or new style to explore. And in my case, it all happened at the same time, mm. you know, 
were shifted. Yeah. Your work has always been thought to be about migration, and you've kind of not not used the word migration so much recently, have but so much as um, tran- uh, mobility, uh, or, mobility or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, because I'm an international artist and I travel a lot. I spend a lot of time in you know flying yeah. or in an airport or in a port or in a train station. And that made me also think about this idea of mobility and simply tourism, mm. you know, and this idea of going from one place to the other. So all, all those elements now interest me is basically glo- globalization. Now, related, very much related to that, and especially the French colonialism that you talk about, at the heart of this exhibition, there are two, the two film works, Middle Sea and Safia. Mm-hmm. They've been described as telling half narratives or beginning to create the germs of narratives. Um, they are still very beautiful films and very evocative films, but there is a kind of a, a vague essence of a narrative running through both of them to some extent. I tend to call it, it might sound really big-headed, but abstractive narrative mm. where there is a sense of looseness, but it's so loose that it becomes ab- abstract, mm. you know. You feel you know what's going to happen the next stage, but in fact it's often that doesn't happen, mm. you know. And I kind of quite confusing things, like I, I will film for, perhaps like in Middle Sea a journey between Algiers and Marseille, but you never know if you're in Algiers or Marseille. And uh, I purposely try to confuse now mm. um, the audience and perhaps myself in some ways. And when I say confuse, it's just I really want to broaden this issue because I think when you talk about an, a journey like that, it, it, could, it could be applied to so many places, mm. you know. It doesn't have to. Obviously, I use my personal interest, which is a family and my parents' immigration. But then from that, I kind of open it up to so many kind of journeys. Mm. Um, and a lot of people, for example, looking at Middle Sea, you know, that made them think of the kind of the Black Atlantic and many other mm. journeys, you know, um, which I think is very interesting. And more and more for me, it's interesting that people can actually find their own mm. histories or experience within my work, uh, wherever the place in the world they are in. Safir is a bit more different in some ways. I mean, a lot of people think you're in France or in the south of, of, of yes. Spain, or mm. because the city is so kind of uh, Mediterranean in that kind of classical way. Um, but I, I think Safir is, is even more confusing because there is two actors. One is French, the other one is Algerian. Uh, but you can't really, he's in fact really Iraqi, you know, but lives in Algeria. And it's kind of using all these kind of uh, um, things for me who helps to that kind of sense of confusion or, or broadness, let's say. Yeah. We're showing the two of them in this exhibition um, and they're very often thought of as a pair in a sense. There's two years separating them, two years of your life. Yeah. Um, do, do you think of them as being related in that sense as a pair? I think they are. I think, I think Middle Sea is definitely a continuity of, of Safia. Unfortunately, very rarely I can show them together. Mm. So, the other, in the larger part of the exhibition, there's a newly commissioned piece, a piece that we've commissioned, that you've made especially for this exhibition, Fragments of a Scattered Vessel. This project was born from um, a trip I did in, in Mauritania on the Atlantic coast, and once more I wanted to kind of do something different. I thought, oh, you know, it's, I'm in a safe place in Algeria, it'd be nice to kind of try to explore um, similar issues somewhere else. And then I got interested in the mode of transport itself, and then you know, transporting, mode of transport being, you know, move, move, movement, moving from one place to the other. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to look also at the depth of that mode of transport. Uh, and in my case, I find, you know, through Google, um, I find this amazing uh, graveyard of boats, of ship on the uh, west coast of Africa between Morocco and Senegal. Um, and uh, when they did a very quick recce, uh, for the place was amazing. Mm. And while I was there, I discovered also that, as well as the symmetry of both, it was also a place where a lot of illegal immigrants were trying to escape to go to Canary Island because they can't go through Algeria and Morocco anymore as they used to. Then the next point now, it's Nouadhibou, which is the second biggest city in Mauritania on the north. And the many is the Senegalese, Malian, and Gambi- Gambians from Gam- mm. Gambi, yeah, who try to escape. And they try to escape to Canary Island, which is a long, long trip. Mm. It's like 800 kilometers, and obviously most of the time they they never arrived, really. Then also I realized that it was a very well-known place for people who were interested in birds, Mm. uh, bird watching, because a lot of birds that immigrate from the north actually go in that space there too. So there was this kind of whole mixture of things going on within that space, and I thought, wow, you know, it's magical. Mm. And I didn't know really the, the, the extent to which it was interesting to me until I went there, you know. 
Uh, and obviously next to also um, where all the boats are, there is that kind of derelict military colon French colonial fort, because Mauritania was colonized by the French. Uh, then there was a lot of things that you know kind of really brought me back. Then I went back, did a whole series of photographs, went back and shot the film that you know, floating coffins. But with all the images I, I had, um, I've decided again that I didn't really want to show them I, I, as I used to show mm. photography, by just presenting them on photographic paper with a frame. Um, and I just wanted to work more three-dimensionally, you know, I, 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 more towards the sculpture rather than the kind of flat mm. image. Um, and then this idea came up of using light boxes, but and again, not in that traditional manner where you just put a light box on a wall like a photograph is. I just wanted to mm. kind of start playing around with objects and with the cables and the electric cables. It's really the story about there was two boats who were leaning against each other that I, I called the lovers when I was there. And then when I went back the second time, there was only one lover there remaining. The other one had been dismantled, but all the carcasses, all the bits from that missing lover was actually on the beach. And that's the image here mm. of the, the death of that lover, mm. you know, in some ways. Mm. Um, all those images are fragments. Mm. And I was very interested in using this idea of fragmentation because those images are so beautiful and because I'm aware that sometimes it's quite difficult to talk about difficult situation by using beautiful images. You know, the, the whole, uh, you know, the exotization of, of you know... Of rust. Yeah, of <laughs> rust, for example. So for me, one way to go around it, you know, was to actually play with this idea of fragmentation. Mm. And the light box was very good because I could fragment it, it but not only that, I could also play in in size of the light box, mm. but also in the depth of mm. them, then none of them are identical, just kind of very slit light boxes. They are still mm. slit, but they, I'm trying to play with like three-dimensional forms and cows really, you know, can recreate some kind of um, chaotic mm. elements mm. within that beautiful imagery. Which is, you referred to it just now, but your last piece of work, Floating Coffins, was a 21, was it, monitors? 15. Different, 15 different sized monitors, which, yeah. um, Presumably that was extremely difficult technically to make yeah. make an installation out of different size monitors. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, but that I think the installation that gave me the idea of working with the light box in that way. And, uh, and I, I can see a point where we'll work still with light boxes, but they'd become even more scriptural, like in the middle of a space perhaps, piling on the top mm. of each other. And yeah. perhaps there won't be photographs anymore, there might be text or something else in, mm. in the imagery, I don't know. But, but that's... Uh, that's I, that's something I enjoy because it's three-dimensional, you know. Well, it's one of the interesting things is that whilst we were in the planning of this exhibition, you were very specific about the architecture, the way in which we would present the works, and this unifying grey walls and mm -hmm. grey floors and so on uh, makes the whole exhibition like a single installation. That's mm -hmm. presumably intentional to some extent as well, is it? Yeah, because, I mean, all the pieces connect with each other. They might be yeah. shot in Algeria or in Mauritania. I think they all connect, you know, mm. uh, by the theme, by the visual qualities, I think, also. Mm. Well, the whole thing does have a very uh, beautiful feel and a very evocative, it's a, it, it is a mixture of the beauty and the melancholic, yeah. and uh, uh, the melancholic being for times lost, and I, I think yeah. dereliction and decay is part of that. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, yeah, a lot of the work tends to look at what has been rather than perhaps what is to to become. Well, it's a very beautiful yeah. exhibition and uh, I'm sure it'll be a, a very, very successful one. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.